Hello and uh, welcome to the Holistic Wellbeing module. I'm really excited um, to welcome you and I can't wait to see you all very soon in our seminar. Um, so the contents of this presentation um, are as follows. So we have an overview of the module, so the purpose, its aims, the learning outcomes, the content and the topics, which I'm sure you'll find really interesting. Then we've got a little bit about the student responsibilities, kind of duties. Um, then it goes on to talk about teaching schedule, assessment, seminar one, information and reading. So a little bit about me first. So I'm Lizzie Freeman, full name Elizabeth. Um, and my kind of expertise uh, is in community psychology, critical psychology and eco psychology. Um, and I really wanted to create this new module to um, enable me to encompass all those disciplines um, and bring to you a very complex, holistic, broad um, module that addresses, I think, um, a real need in society, um, but also um, in the course. I'm hoping you're going to leave this module far more aware of the con uh, the complex layers um, that surround well-being, not just understanding well-being, but treating uh, or you know trying to foster well-being. Um, I also am really passionate about working in a holistic way, so that whole idea of that one size doesn't fit all, that often people need multiple different various things to support their well-being uh, and mental health. Um, and also, I really want you to um, question. I want you to become questioning and aware citizens um, who don't take things at face value. So I want you to be inquisitive, curious. I want you to have the skills to explore and to investigate which um, obviously you've been building up as you've been completing the other modules of this degree and no doubt you will continue to do so um, in other electives this year and next year. Um, but yeah, really, really want you to enjoy this and, and become quite an all-rounded all person um, at, the, the, at the end of the module or at least be on the pathway to that. Um, and I think this will be invaluable in knowledge for you to take into the real world, whether you end up going into a psychology specific career or whether you don't, uh, it, this will be really useful to you personally, um, but also anybody you work with in the future. Okay, so um, the purpose and the scope of the module is to bring together and critically appraise previous knowledge gained at level four. Uh, so things like uh, uh, the aspects you learn in psychological well-being and I'll touch upon upon things that overlap um, and build on those uh, those aspects as we go along in the lectures and the seminars and I also want you to bring in that knowledge too. Um, our seminars are going to be full of discussion, okay, so participation is really important and um, a lot of it's about self-exploration and, you know, as talking about opinions and um, contradictory opinions as well. Um, they're all very welcome. Uh, we also want you to apply your learning in this in this module, approach wellbeing holistically, take into consideration many different issues that are beyond the individual. So therefore we do take into account the individual, but we also take into account the contextual and the environmental issues. Um, that are related to um, well-being and we also explore the benefits and the challenges of reconnecting people to, to, to yourself, to family, friends, community, to learning, um, career and, and nature. All of which, you know, I think are very important to well-being and many others agree. So, what are the influencing um, kind of evidence philosophies? Well, like I said at the beginning, we've got community psychology, critical psychology, positive psychology as well, and eco-psychology as kind of specialisms that we draw upon when focusing on the issues of this module, which I'll talk about just in a minute. 
So it's really important and I'm hoping this means you'll become quite critical but also enterprising and creative um, by, end, by the end of the module and the assessment will help you do that too. Okay, so all those um, details, you know, about these different kind of uh, specialities will become much more clear. So you're going to have um, lecture next week, um, which will go into detail about what exactly do I mean about the details of these disciplines that will support and enhance uh, your learning on this module. Okay. And in terms of the learning outcomes, okay, by the end of the module, um, you will be able to critically appraise and evaluate well-being literature, theory and models. You'll be able to critically appraise and evaluate well-being prevention and intervention approaches. And you'll be able to apply your knowledge to real life issues um, critically and holistically. Okay. Lectures and seminars, okay, all lectures throughout the whole semester will be online anytime, just like this one. So you can listen to it whenever you like um, and as many times as you like. Ideally, you know, listen to lectures before seminars. Um, that will help. I know this one's a little bit um, late, so apologies for that. But it's um, no major thing if you uh, haven't listened to it before the seminar uh, tomorrow. So don't worry at all. Uh, lectures will also include a little helpful to-do list near the end of the slides and provide a list of reading you can choose from as well. So do have a proper look. Seminars will be online live um, at least for the next four weeks. Okay, this is because of the government guidelines. So, um, but it might be extended. So please do watch out for your emails. Um, uh, basically, it will be online live unless you're told otherwise. Uh, we'll keep you informed uh, through the module, but also through the course leader team and emails. Um, seminars will help you prepare for the assessments, which is really important you attend, um, but also help you with motivation and, and peer support and learning, okay? Um, okay, now, in terms of the seminars, um, you know, it's really important you understand your responsibility. Attendance is important, you know that already. If you can't attend for some reason, please do let me know. Um, it's courteous, it's professional, and it means I can, um, you know, guide you to where the sources are so you can catch up, all right? Engage with the reading preparation, but also, most importantly, participate, participate, okay? Get involved um, in the sessions. Be active, not passive, all right? The more you put into these sessions, the seminars, the more you will get out of it, I promise. All right. I'm really hoping um, I'll be able to create a nice, friendly atmosphere so you can feel like you can do that talking. Um, and it really does enhance your experience and your learning. OK. All right. So other things. OK. Independent learning is really important. All modules expect you to do independent learning. All right. And um, it's a roundabout, very roughly, for every kind of two hours of teaching time, you're expected to do at least double of that in independent learning. So that's reading, making notes, planning, and preparation for seminars, things like that. At least double the hours of your teaching should be um, followed up by independent um, learning that you steer. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll put in things you need to do in the learning materials section and I may add extra activities based on what um, we discuss in our seminars um, directed by what you need and want. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on that. It's really important you do those independent hours and then you'll feel so much more comfortable and you'll get a lot more out of the seminar, uh, the module itself. Okay, fantastic. Right, so the module topics, the things we'll cover, um, but we also cover a lot more than this. Um, but these are the main uh, aspects of the module. So what is well-being? We'll cover models of well-being. Uh, so looking at theory, looking at how we understand what well-being is. Um, we'll look at intervention prevention approaches. We'll also look at what we mean by well-being in context. 
and we'll look at family background, locality, the nature of society and the environment and nature connection and how all those influence our well-being. We'll also look at well-being and personal development. Uh, it's something I'm very passionate about and um, of course that also influences our sense of well-being as well. And throughout, so from um, family, locality, nature, society, environment, a lot of those will have an example of therapeutic approaches that help um, um, foster those positive aspects of those things. And we'll also look at community uh, approaches as well. Okay, and they'll be really nice examples, kind of real life examples. All right, so. So generally, okay, um, what I want you to do in this module is to critically evaluate um, the following. So how family background shapes well-being, behaviour and the kinds of interventions that attempt to address family issues. Um, I want you to critically evaluate the way in which an individual's locality shapes a person's well-being. So these might be community-based interventions and local action um, should be explored here. I also want you to critically evaluate how well-being is related to nature of society. Uh, the structure and the purpose of society should be questioned in relation to the relationship between power, authority and well-being, including the role of legislation and regulation for well-being. And then I also want you to critically evaluate how the health of our environment, our planet, for example, influences well-being and look at the benefits and methods of reconnecting with nature and being um, an environmental steward. OK, now I want you to do this exploration throughout the whole module, um, but for the assessment, you can just choose one um, area if you want. Um, but I do want you to consider all those aspects and we will do in each seminar in depth, okay? And all that knowledge that you build around those topic areas um, will really be beneficial. All right. And to help us, we'll be using the Braun from Bren, a socio-ecological model, as like a very firm base model that we'll be using throughout the whole mo um, module, okay? And it will really help you conceptualise the contextual um, aspects of well-being, what influences all the layers that influence our well-being. This, there's lots of different versions of the model. This is one, um, and this is focused on the child, um, but um it just shows you all the different influencers and this, these these aren't exhaustive lists but it just gives you some examples of what we mean so i will go into much more depth about this in the next lecture for next week and um but for for now this gives you a little taster so in the middle here you see like the most um close and most most powerful influencing um systems are things like the adults around you, your peers, your parents, your siblings, um, school, home, religious setting if you have one, and neighbourhood. And then further out and influencing factors, religious settings, neighbourhood, school, home, and also um, anything that's in your kind of immediate um, kind of life environments so like classes you go to. And then you've got the school board, for example. So like Decisions made on, in the school boards influence how you're taught at school. For example, local government influences your neighbourhood. Parents' workplace influences, you know, how your parents, uh, how much time your parents spend with you, maybe how stressed they are. Mass media, for example, um, and local industry. And then the largest, biggest kind of sphere is um, the, the macro system. And it's like dominant beliefs, attitudes, ideologies, um, and um, these all uh, influence how we behave, think, develop as people. And then I would put another sphere around that, another layer, which is like our um, ecosystems, okay? Because the health of our environment impacts us, and I'll go into a lot more detail about that later on in the module. Okay, so that just gives you um, a starter 
um, kind of overview of what I mean there.